2018, December 22nd. Um, it's about a little bit before 7 o'clock in the morning. This is Glentona Main Beach. We are going to do the, the wreck and cave hikes this morning at low tide, the spring low tide and we're going to head in that easterly direction across the rocks and along the beach for about three and a half kilometers and then turn around and come back home again it promises to be quite an adventure I hope to show you all the nice spots along the way quite a couple of caves a um, little bit of rock scrambling and we'll probably get our feet wet at some stage as well it's about 10 past 7 we're going to start the hike now we're going to head towards the east that direction That's the way down the stairs from where we come. That's the view up to the, up the beach towards Great Brack and around the bay towards Mossel Bay. Alright, here we go. It's about 20 past 7 and this is Byclip, uh, in English Bay Rock. And once you pass here, going over the rocks over here in front, um, there are multiple ways of doing it at low tide. Um, you can go over the rocks or you can go in front of the rocks depending on where the water line goes. If the water is too high, then this is the way over the rocks. There's a marker at the top and we'll start climbing over here. So you can see it's fairly rough terrain but uh, the water today is fairly low so we're going to go around the front way. It's about 25 past 7 and this is the usual way of coming over the rocks instead of going down around the front. That's the way ahead facing east. Turning around. And that's the path over the rocks. As I've said, it's fairly uneven ground. But if the water is low enough, going around the front is relatively easy going. I'm going to go over the top to show you just what it's like. This is the way over the rocks. Quite a bit of scrambling. It's easy enough to do. It might look worse than what it is. Are we going up here? Yep, we're going up here. Yeah, just like stairs. Only a little bit more messy. A little bit more messy, as you say. And here we are at the top, so that wasn't too hard. There's the view ahead. Quite a nice day for a hike. We're going around the first set of rocks here and then the next set of rocks and then the third set of rocks 
and the fourth set of rocks and then we'll get to the caves. Over there is our first cave actually, it's quite a deep one. And also a piece of climbing that uh, in some circles are known, is known as Gesaipte uh, Krans. There isn't really a proper English translation, I suppose you might call it high stoned cliff because it's high and you need to be stoned to climb it down. Um, I was once in a situation with a group of school kids and we um, had to climb it down with heavy weekend camping packs because the water level was just too high for us to pass the, around the front. But today it's going to be easy going. Coming down is a little bit more tricky. It's not that it's more steep. It's just that your body orientation is a little bit different and you need to check your balance. Then we're going over the rocks. As you can see there's no smooth path. And we're going up to the cave for our first little bit of cave crawling. It's about half past seven. This is the way up to the cave entrance. And there we go. Okay, it's quite dark. Uh, there, the lighting, the lighting on the video is improving a bit. It's quite a substantial cave, um, sufficient space for quite a few people to overnight. Um, goes in quite a way. So this is the main chamber. That's the way back to the entrance. And yeah, the end is up there. Um, I'm going to take out a flashlight to go all the way. Right, who's ready for a bit of cave crawling? Okay. Flashlights on and don't step in the hole. It's not a very deep hole. Whoops. And the one major danger of cave crawling like this. is bumping your head. Silly as it may sound, it can be quite um, painful. What about on this side? It's so gooey. Gooey? Where? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, got some stalactites growing from the roof. Let's see if I can get the lighting a little bit better. Here we go, there's a nice one. And there's a little droplet forming. Let's see how it drops. Ah, it's gonna take ages. I'm not patient enough to wait for them to drop. Okay, it's getting darker as we're moving further into the cave. 
here's some substantial stalagmites growing from the floor but they've all been broken off through the years let's see if I can get a better shot where are they If people don't break them off, then uh, the stalactites and the stalagmites might grow to reach each other from the roof and from the floor. But that'll take a good couple of years. Yeah. This is as deep as it goes. There's not much more there. I don't know if you can see that. There we go. We're actually pretty deep into the cave. Yep. I suppose it's about okay. I suppose it's about I don't know thirty meters to the cave entrance. It goes in quite far. This is one of the bigger caves. Really? Yep. It's about twenty to eight and coming out of the cave we will be turning to our left, going east along the beach. Don't slip on the rocks, even though they seem to be dry. Sand under your feet can uh, become rather slippery. And that's the way ahead. Sometimes this little gully is filled with water and you need to get your feet wet or climb along that way over the rocks. Still about 20 to 8. Often enough, all of the sand gets washed out every couple of months or so, and then it's just rocks that you need to climb over. It's not an easy hike. And uh, the sand washed out, the water can come in higher, and you can't really walk here either, and you need to go over the, over the rocks at the top. Climb up over there. Let's see if I can demonstrate quickly. Going over the top over there is not the way to go. That is the way to Gesape de Kranz, where you have to be Gesape to climb it. Um, but over here, you can quickly scoot along if the water pulls out. And then go over the top. This might not be too comfortable. Some people do not feel comfortable leaning out over this little precipice here. This rock over here is protruding quite far, so you can turn around and go up the hill. You can see there's a path over the top, but that leads to Gesape de Kranz. Don't do that, please. And from the top, this little bay over here is called Happy Bay. Um, it seems to be quite a happy little bay. That's the way we've come. And there we go. It's about quarter to eight. We're on Happy Beach, Happy Bay. And this is the view from Happy Bay Beach. That's the way we've come. It's 
about 10 to 8. We're at the end of Happy Bay Beach. And um, through the rocks, that's the way forward. But I'm going to show you the alternative route in case you need to. It's across the rocks over there. A reasonably well used path. Careful of your footing, once again, sand under your feet, sand under your shoes can be quite slippery. It's about five to eight, and there's a valley on the left hand side as you're going up the beach to the caves. Or a rift. It's really a lovely day for a hike. It's just about 8 o'clock now. That rock in front, the birds on top. I believe that rock is called High Rock. Uh, let me just get out my map here quickly. The map isn't all that clear. And I'm not sure how accurate it is. But this is the highest rock on the beach as far as I know. This might be called High Rock in Afrikaans, Ruhekop. Um, I was camping in the cave once, and uh, the next morning I had to run back to Gintana Beach to get some fresh water um, because there's, there aren't any facilities at the caves. Um, and as I ran past this rock, there was a gull on top. We decided that I must have been a threat, a threat of, of some sort, and it started attacking me. And dive bombed, kamikaze, it went ballistic. I had to duck and weave to get out of the way, and coming back on the way again, same story. So, um, in my mind, this is called Gull Rock. That's five past eight, and I believe this is known as flat bunkies or the flats in English. And I've seen some anglers on these rocks many times before, um, probably catching the daily meal. Slip. Watch your footing. Yeah, 
it's about quarter past eight and this is the first view of the wreck this wreck is actually not a shipwreck as many people think um, but it is a, it used to be a, a floating dry dock and it stranded here in 1902 um, the story was that it needed to be transported to uh, Durban Harbour on the east coast of South Africa and as it passed Marshall Bay uh, a storm arose on the seas and one of its um, mooring lines broke if that's the proper word one of its towing lines broke, broke and uh, there were quite a few attempts to uh, to save it again there was a second line attached but that also snapped and then eventually due to the rough seas it was decided to abandon the effort and eventually it washed out here um, if I remember my facts correctly a certain Mr. George Parks obtained the salvage rights and he came here and stripped down I suppose he had a whole team of men doing it um, stripped down whatever they could salvage from the dry docks as you can see it's broken into one two three pieces and on Google Maps you can see them lying in a line diagonally running into the sea um, today with uh, spring low tide it is actually possible to approach the front the front part of the of the wreck without getting too wet um, and for the more adventurous among us you could actually climb on top it is tricky and the structure is rusted so if you get a pick up a scrape or cut yourself on on the jagged edges that could land you in hospital and we're going that way oh yes just behind us there's a little holiday beach house apparently the owners have a garage on top of the hill uh, which you can't see now and they park there and then come down a path I'm not sure how clear the path is but I can see a diagonal line zigzagging down the cliff it goes into the valley and comes out at the back door of that house oh there are some people on the porch it's just about 20 past 8 that's the wreck behind us turning around we're going through the eye of the needle uh, most of us are going through the eye of the needle but um, I'm taking an alternative route and I'm taking a friend with me who's going to demonstrate um, an alternative route that might sometimes be necessary if the eye of the needle is not accessible usually it's not easy to go around the front of these rocks because there's a certain amount of water so I'd like to show you all the alternatives okay we need to go over the rock Of the needle we're passing to left hand side of the top of the rocks and that on the horizon is rocks there the furthest end farthest end that's where we want to get to 
But in order to get there, sometimes it's necessary to crawl along that rock face. Hello? Sorry, say again. Isn't she ahead? Okay, let's just finish this and then I'll start looking for her. Right, this is where it gets tricky. For my next demonstration, I also require the assistance <laughs> of a member of the audience. I would like to say, you must go before and behind. Yeah, it's not easy, but someone must just for the people's advice. Joy, do you want to go as well? Right, as you can see, it's not difficult, but you need to be aware of what you're getting yourself into. From that little bit of scrambling, um, you get straight ahead. Coming through the eye of the needle, it is possible at spring low tide if there's enough sand on the beach to walk on the sand come around the front it's easy enough you don't have to do the scrambling but sometimes the beach is impossible and then you need to do the scrambling don't slip And then, up there, that is what we call the Dierkrei plaque, or the crawl space. And you literally, literally have to do a bit of crawling there. It's about 25 to 9, and we're at the crawl space. I have uh, convinced um, some of my team to uh, demonstrate how this is done. There we go. It's about a five meter drop down into the hole. I'll try to get a shot of that. A bit of length there. Five meter drop into the hole. Um, I refer to this hole as the jacuzzi. Hopefully, on the way back, we can show you what the jacuzzi looks like. But that's whoops, what's happening here? Why is it dark? Oh, there we go. That's what's required through the crawl space. And the second biggest danger, I can't remember whether I've said this already, the second biggest, biggest danger is bumping your head. If you're wearing a pea cap with a visor, I recommend that you turn it backwards so you can see where not to bump your head. This is probably the most exciting little bit of scrambling that we've got along the way. 
Ah, foi Morion. Might be a good idea to remove your backpack as well. Uh, sometimes the backpacking gets snagged on the rocks overhead. Uh, one of our group is actually a little bit acrophobic. Um, I've taken many acrophobes past this point in the past. Initially they're not comfortable with the idea, but once they see how it's done and how it can be done, they manage to get through without any big hassles. Just take your time and you can always stop along the way if you're not feeling comfortable. There is enough space to sit down and relax. There we go, turn the, turn the cap backwards so that you can see where not to bump your head. This is a very good demonstration actually. Keep it low, keep it low. It's about 20 to 9. Everybody's passed through the crawl space. There's the wreck in the background. And the crawl space from the other side. Here's the path along the ledge and quite a nice view. It's about 20 to 9, a couple of paces down the way. There's a wreck in the background and the way we came and here's our next little cave. It's not very deep. I'll just have a quick pop in. Oh, it's, it's about 10 meters maximum to the end. And that's the way ahead. It's about quarter to nine. Have you been to the cave? Yeah. What's the base word? Yeah. And that yeah. beach at the, at the far end. Yeah. That's where we want to be. And this is the view from this point. That's the way we've come. And here's the next cave. Also not a very deep cave, I believe. Sorry. Right. There. There's a bit of scrambling if you want to get to the top. I'm not going to do all of that now. And going left towards the east. That's the way we're going. Quarter to nine still. Coming down from that last cave, 
on the rocks over here. I call this useless bridge. It's a bridge, but you don't need to use it. And then you go over towards that way, head towards the head running into the sea over there, and then over the top of the rocks, and down on the back side. This is just past the useless bridge, and we're going up that way, and around the bend, and that way, and apparently we've got some dolphins, I'm going to pan around. Point again, point again. I'm not seeing the dolphins yet. They're in that general vicinity. Come on, dolphins, jump! Nope, I'm gonna give up. Okay, it's just before nine o'clock and uh, we're getting close to the, the Bay of Caves. Cave Bay. And if you stick to the high end of the rocks, close to the vegetation up the cliff, we'll come to a big rock. And as you walk around towards the backside, You come across a certain formation which some of us lovingly refer to as the anvil. There you go. I hope that's clear enough. It's a protrusion from the side of the rock and it's quite um, peculiar and unique. It's one of the landmarks that you can look out for. And then walking around the back of the rock. Come into a little gully. Spring low tide, it is possible to find your way almost anywhere over the rocks. But when the water level is a little bit higher, you might want to stick closer to the high end of the rocks, closer to the vegetation. And it is possible to find your way like that as well. And here we get to our first big cave. There's one on the left hand side. It goes in for about 15 or 20 meters I guess. You have to climb up those stairs over there. Here are the stairs. Going to the top floor, second story. And I don't know if you can see it, but we've got little critters running all over the rocks. That's the way out. How far does that go? About 15 or 20 meters at most. Get our flashlights out. Okay. Let's see how this goes. 
Don't bump your head. Here's the roof. Yeah. Here's the side. Coming down onto the floor. And that's the end of the cave. That's the floor. That's the wall. Coming around. And that's going outside. Still just past nine, coming down from the stairs out of that first cave and up to a little spot that we call the window. Oh yeah, there, there might be some bats in the caves. Um, there is one big cave which is relatively inaccessible, which we call the bat cave and it's full of bats, hundreds and hundreds of them. This is the window. Climb up here. It's fairly easy going. I'm doing it without hands. You can go on the other side. Uh, climbing through the window, going down the other side. And that's the window. This is a bigger cave. Goes a little bit more. A bit further. Don't bump your head. I'm going as far as I can. As far as I can go comfortably. All right. Okay. Here. Oh, that's just me. Bump my backpack. Here's a bat or a bird. I hope I got that on camera actually. Let's see. This is fairly narrow. It's huge. It goes in far, yes. Oh, I can feel something on me. It's the roof. Okay, let's go in here. I think I'm going to take off my backpack. Just a moment. I've just removed my backpack and going to go a little bit further. It's not very clear on the video. That's the roof of the cave. It's rather low here. We have to crawl. Oh, oh, don't bump your head, says the guy who bumps his head. And there is a tiny little crawl space. No, but I'm too big to go through there. Same here. I don't think I fit through there. Okay, that's going out. The lighting is a bit dim. But I'm not carry I'm not going to carry a five hundred watt spotlight into this cave. So my little flashlight has to do. It's about 10 past 9, coming out of those caves. Might be some more caves over here. And we've got a little garden on the side over here. It does look like a movie set. It's quite spectacular. I don't think I'm going to take the video all the way in. It just gets too dark at the end, but uh, you get the idea. It's, it's quite a nice cave. Oh, and the roof is quite high. There's the garden on the side, and the way out again. It's 
about quarter past nine. That's the cave that we've just been in, going next door to the neighbors. We're not that far behind because the target piece is just over there. Some nice greenery all around here as well. And there's a little bit of an uphill. That's the view from the front porch. Hmm. Prime real estate, I think. I don't know what made those holes. Probably some moles made the holes for a good game of whack-a-mole. Oh, okay. All right. Let's see. We can fit through there, but I'm not too keen to go in. Uh -uh. It goes in quite a way. I guess someone did go through there. Coming out of the neighbor's cave, um, you can go through that little crevice over there to the main beach. But sometimes the sand is washed out and then there's a lot of water in there and it becomes inaccessible. And then you have to go over the top. Over there. Can we go over the top? Yep, I'm going over the top. There's a bit of scrambling. You okay? Right. This is where we're walking, it's right on the ledge. Be careful, don't slip. It is also possible to jump over this gap over here, but I'm generally not too fond of jumping like that. Right, let's just keep an eye on the child. There we go. See, it's easy enough. Well done! And this is the main beach. If you bring a ball or a frisbee, you can have a pretty good old time. Glentona and the surrounding beaches are not really known as, as the best swimming beaches. There are some quite strong rip currents, rip tides, but if you stay in the shallows, you should be okay. And coming around the bend, looking uphill, that is the bat cave. Going uphill is fairly steep going, coming downhill is even steeper. Coming downhill is more difficult than going uphill. On the other side, 
the cave is as deep as what this wall is high and there are hundreds and hundreds of bats in that cave do not recommend going in there apparently bats carry all kinds of diseases for which we haven't got any cures yet and next door there's another cave we can go in there Here's a little pool. And it goes in quite a way. But I'm going to turn the video off now. It's about 25 past 9. Moving on from the lost cave. Here is another cave. This is the last cave I'm going to record today. The reason for that will be revealed shortly. This is known as the toilet cave because on a camp this is as this is the best ablution facilities you're probably going to find coming around the front door. Here we have a little alcove and that is the toilet. Please bring a stick or a paddle of some kind to, uh, well, you know what to do. And then about once every month at springtide, this little alcove is flushed and ready for the next month's visitors. This cave might be known as the toilet cave, but I've decided also to call it the secret cave. Because this cave has a secret. And because it's a secret, I'm not going to tell you what it is. You will need to find it for yourself. Yeah, it's always fun. Some people think that they, they might not enjoy finding that secret, but then eventually they end up going all the way anyways. So, uh, to keep the secret, I'm going to stop the recording here. It's just about 11 o'clock now. We've done a bit of cave crawling and a bit of swimming and exploring and discovering and secreting and all lots of all, all kinds of fun things. And we're about ready to go back home again going towards the west that way it's about half past 11 we've taken a nice leisurely stroll back from the caves here is the first of our party arriving this is on the main beach turning around and we're about 10 minutes away from home we should be back around lunchtime <laughs> 